Okay, hi, a very good morning. Okay, a very good morning to all of you. Okay, so um, uh, thanks for the introduction. Okay, so um, I will try to keep it within 10 minutes, right, so that I have time for discussion. Okay, so basically, um, just to summarize a little bit of what I'm actually doing, okay, and basically this one chart actually sort of like summarize what I actually do in the university, right? So I deal with a lot of different kind of data, right, from across different disciplines, science, tech, humanities, etc. Um, and of course, you know, come up with different kind of outputs, be it whether it's physical or digital outputs, okay. And one of the challenges here is that I actually work on, a lot of my projects are actually cut across different disciplines. It means one, work, one project cut across different, it's a, often interdisciplinary projects. Okay? So I think over the course of uh, years of my work, I've developed you know, several uh, kind of uh, platforms or sites using WordPress. And this is just a selected list. Right? It ranges from very basic you know, all the way to uh, uh, pretty, I would say, advanced platforms that, that they check on a lot of different kind of uh, 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 APIs or a lot of different kind of open source tools, right, which I will show today. Okay? So, for me, I think WordPress is an awesome platform in the sense of by, in the area of representing knowledge. Right? Uh, while I was reflecting on what I've been doing over the past years, actually WordPress can be, be used across different kind of uh, um, approaches, right? So it could be used as a digital showcase, right, of work. It can be used as a form of digital curation, which include things like uh, digital archiving and stuff. Uh, it's a wonderful tool to be used for digital storytelling, okay, right? Uh, for each of these projects, my starting, how do I start on this project is always prototyping. It's always sketches. So before I actually use Adobe uh, Experience, I actually use, do a lot of sketches on pen and paper, very basic. Right? And this actually is a very important phase when you talk about interfaces because through the process of thinking, you're actually identifying your users, you're actually identifying the key functionalities, the key features, and how do the audiences actually interact with the different content of your site. Okay? So this, to me, is actually, other than working on the design, is also an important uh, thinking process to get started on designing interfaces. So, for example, like this um, is one kind of project using WordPress. Uh, I call it a CV block uh, or a resume block. Okay, so this is actually a, CV, a, virtual, block, a virtual CV block for a faculty okay, in wearable tech. Okay? Uh, and on top of that, uh, that presents a gallery kind of a view of her works. Okay, I actually use it to actually host affiliated events as well. And one thing about WordPress is that it can be on the same site, but it can have a different look and feel. So even though it looks as it looks as seems is a is a totally different website, but actually it's actually part of the same blog site. So I use page builder teams to do that. Okay, to actually separate. Um, you know, between a standard block for the, for the, for the professor and, and then have your own look and feel for exhibition as part of the same block. Okay? Uh, I actually extended the concept a little bit. Even though the previous site is only for one faculty, I, I actually extended a little bit. In this case, it's like a portfolio. And uh, the, the works are actually contributed by students at the School of Art, Design and Media. Okay, and today we I think we have about uh, 870 works, creative works, right? So from a single uh, CV blog, I extended it now into a portfolio, same thing using WordPress, okay? And more importantly is to facilitate a kind of workflow of the school, the, the submission workflow of the school, okay? Right, so uh, you can see that a, there's, a, there's a listing of all the different projects at the front, each of the projects have their own de detailed page, and then each of the students will have their own uh, profile page that actually automatically pull their, their work together, right? providing a snapshot of, of, of themselves. Um, I also really think about other ways of how do I present the content of ADN portfolio. Right? So same thing, 
you can build something like this, a major grid that is meant for a large screen display. Right? So for example, like events like um, FIP showcase, this can be projected on a, on a large screen. Okay? That it can automatically change uh, on a certain interval. Okay? So to tap on the previous concept of uh, having separate sites as part, as having seven sites as part of the same block site, right? I can also extend this to the to the individual ADM show. So, for instance, for the same ADM portfolio site, right? Separate sites have been have been uh, specially designed right, across the past three years. Each of them have their own look and feel, and pulling the content that's contributed from the students directly, right? Okay. So, in short, actually. A lot of times, I usually use WordPress as a form of container, okay, um, where it provides as a fundamental platform, okay, and I actually use a lot of a different series of open source tools to, to, to actually add in certain functionalities of WordPress. So, for instance, like this, you know, this is actually a research blog which I'm I'm part. This is actually part of the research I'm actually part uh, involved in, okay. I tap on different kind of uh, sorry different kind of platforms, okay? For example, like Mapbox to bootstrap libraries, right? To JavaScript libraries, right? To build a, a, a platform like this, okay? Um, I use like a MVC model to think about how do I deal with data? How do I deal with the interfaces? How do the users actually interact with the content? Okay, what are the different interactions, right? So this is actually some of my codes. Okay, yeah. and from this it arrives to this, uh, whereby it's interactive. People can zoom in and zoom out, click on any part of the map, right, and then view information. And the next phase actually is to inter is to, is to link this with Web three D modeling data, which I have. Okay, All right. All right. So uh, another project I work on is actually to create a research portal to think about how actually researchers across uh, different teams can work together and share information. So this is an example of a site whereby about 20, okay, about different twi uh, 20 researchers working on site and space in Southeast Asia. They are all from different countries, even around 11 different countries, right? Uh, and they actually, I usually use WordPress to design a, a, a certain way on how they can share information. And so it is an architecture diagram. Okay, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. So each of, uh, each of the team have their own space. In other words, I call it uh, sites, right? Okay, Hui have their own site, Pina have their own site, Yangon have their own site. Okay, and researchers does fair schools. That means they go on the or go to the site and collect data. So one of the things is that how do I actually make it into something that they can contribute to the site using their mobile phone? Okay, so. This is one, okay, they can actually insert the content and then the, the, the location of where the data is that they get from uh, is automatically uh, aggregated, right? And then it links, it actually leads to individual postings on WordPress, right? So uh, just, just to end, I would like to present some kind of further possibilities of WordPress. A, a lot of things I was talking about now is more towards the uh, digital uh, side of things can be through the through the computer through the screen flat screen, okay. Uh, that sorry, there's a, there's a saying that by few years ago by Jeffrey Snap, who is the founder for the uh, uh, um, so wait, where is it founder for the Meta Lab at Harvard University, okay. So he said that you know there's a certain point where people are really will get tired of screens, okay, and we will need to think about alternative ways of how we can interact with content. Right, they need basically a richer so-called sensorium of content. So this actually brings me to, you know, how do we actually extend out the content on 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 the screen to physical spaces? Right. So what is it like to view a blog site in an exhibition as an or, or, or a digital archive in an exhibition? Okay. Or how can we use WordPress as a as a digital installation? Okay, so these two is the, the the first two, right? Is actually an as part of the installation or exhibition at the Art Science Museum. 
right, powered by WordPress as well. Right? And the third one is actually like a digital kiosk, put it on the large touch screen. Uh, it's actually presented at the United Nations in Geneva early this year. Right? So these are when I think of this, these are the different kind of interactions and how actually can we design the interface to consider all these different interactions on site. Right? Of course, we've been talking about responsive layouts, but probably the next step of thinking about interfaces is how do we actually insert some kind of sensorial or how do we actually relate to the physical environments. I'm talking about something like this. Right? What role can WordPress do? How can we use WordPress for such things? Okay? Uh, we have all these different kind of mediums, the dome, large screens, projection mapping, AR, v, AR VR, web 3D motion, motion detection sensors, AI. So how do we actually tap on this and then integrate it into, a word, in, into WordPress? Remember the earlier point I mentioned that I use WordPress as a container, right? Yep. So I think essentially, this is my, uh, uh, essentially WordPress is not a standalone thing. You, you need a, a sort of a set of different skill sets when you talk about designing interfaces, right? Visuals, the content, and then also the overall experience, right? How do actually users actually interact with each and every type of content? Video, text, images, okay? Yep. Um, so future work, um, as mentioned, I, I just started my PhD and I'll be looking into this area of interfaces um, and in, in, in greater detail, right? I'm actually reconceptualizing, reconceptualizing the word interface all the way back from the Renaissance period. Okay, so good luck to me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's all I have. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, three minutes, okay. Yes. Hey, I have uh, two short questions actually. So mm. basically the first one when you show the portfolio, the one that page. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is normal typical WordPress when they have a lot of images, you will cause a loading issue like the time to load. Mm. So I don't know whether there's something, there's a challenge that you encounter around this area. Mm -hmm. Like WordPress when it comes to searching engine optimization when they use the image portfolio. Uh, the second thing I wanted to find out is from the knowledge graph, like what particular resource like do you use in terms of WordPress like technical plugins or anything to simplify all this deployment because the integration let's say I'm not a coder, like is there any way that you can advise how around how to simplify all the integration part? You mean from the from the from one of the archive that I show is it? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so to answer your first question is that, yes, images always pose a, a, a performing issue on WordPress, okay? But so, for example, like this, okay, uh, this, this is, uh, yeah. FIP, okay, we also need to consider this. It's a very valid point. So when, they, when the students are so-called submitting their work, one way is that we, uh, of course, I use formidable form for this. So there's a way to limit the size of images, okay? The, 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 yeah. So can we, let's say they, they upload a 5 MB image, single image, it will not work because I set it to a certain, I think 1 MB or something like that. That, that is one way of doing it, okay? Is to restrict uh, at, 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 this, at, this, at the cre post-creation level, okay? They restrict the size of the images or content, okay? Another way is actually, for back end is that, uh, we also think of using things like Amazon or something like that. That can means you host your images somewhere else, okay? And then, uh, and then basically, when, when loading that time, you're actually not loading directly from your WordPress, from your, from your server, you're actually loading from an external so image server. CDN right? Yeah, you can do that, yeah. Yeah, actually I use that for, to, to, to optimize the performance of the site. So I use a lot of CDNs, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, to answer your second question on this uh, knowledge flow, is it? Uh, this thing, is it? Yeah, I mean like... Okay. Okay, um, the, difficult <clears throat> the difficult part is actually to understand how each of these plugins works, okay? But fortunately, a lot of these plugins do provide some kind of like library, uh, JavaScript library. 
they provide a lot of examples that you can actually just copy and paste the codes in, edit or reconfigure some kind of settings. Okay. Um, actually, for me, the, de you are really, the developer is really not about the integration. The developer is actually how each of these work together. Right? So for example, like uh, formula, formula form is being used for uh, uh, that data creation, can means inserting, inputting data. Bootstrap is thinking of layouts, right? The team, DB team, page builder team is allowing me to actually target uh, or create design different interfaces for a certain group of audience or purpose, right? So I think that's the challenge, yeah, yeah, here, okay? Sorry? Yep. Yes, Thank you, Hedrin, that's yep. all we have time for. Mm. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes to stop rooms if you need to. Um, and